today's program is we will be covering three uh, standards 26, 28 and 29. Before that any uh, questions relating to any standards which have uh, you know which have been covered in last four days. There are two kind of uh, one is forex received. Huh. Yeah, amount received in forex and amount uh, another is amount uh, of expenses incurred in forex. Now, in case of uh, expenditure, the imp uh, um, product can be the fixed asset or the revenue expenditure. Fixed asset like case study or books. Huh. And for revenue expenditure, it can be subscription. Okay. When I am uh, sending the remittance, we incur some bank charges. Hmm. So, the amount of bank charges debited by the bank should be charged to the item or it should be debited to the bank charges separately in the accounts. What the standard says? Okay. Any uh, bank charges which is not related to fixed assets, okay, should go to bank charges or financial charges or expense account. Not related to fixed, fixed assets. assets. Okay. okay. Something which is related to fixed assets, especially those fixed assets which take time to get installed. Okay, that CWIP process and all that. Only that kind of bank charges can be added to your cost of asset. Otherwise, it should ideally be taken to expenditure. If it is finished goods guide on thing, then ideally it should be debited to bank charges. Finished goods means books. 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 Yes, what so you books want? is your fixed asset, right? The fixed asset, whether the bank charge should be charged to the book in that case. No. In case of CWIP kind of thing you are yes, saying. Yes, books okay. is something which you have bought and you have kept. So, finished. cost of that book should okay. not be increased by bank okay. charges. Okay. And, and in case of income, similarly gross approach should be applied. Yes. Bank account debit, bank charges separately debit to income, something right. like that. Right, right. Gross okay. income should be booked as income and bank charges okay. should be as expense. Okay, thank you. Architectural consultancy fee in case of? In case of construction of building, the, this drawing fees and all should be added to the cost of the building. While discussing AS12 government grants, yes, there was a uh, an area of uh, charging depreciation on assets huh. acquired out of government grants, and uh, there you said that it, the, the depreciation should not be charged the, the, the uh, assets acquired of government grant. The depreciation on assets acquired after depreciation grant should not be charged to income expenditure account. That's no, what I said. said uh, depreciation should be charged, and then the deferred revenue expenditure yes. should also be credited to PNL. Now it should be knocked off. Both should be in the same account. Okay. Now then uh, someone said that government requires us to keep it separate. So in that case, if it is required by some regulator or government to keep it separate, you can keep it separate. But both should go to PNL. Your depreciation on fixed asset and your deferred revenue grant income. Supposing, suppose the, the, if the depreciation is directly taken to income and expenditure account uh, without uh, deferred revenue, with deferred uh, expenditure, de revenue expenditure, uh, what's wrong with this? No, wrong is, see, uh, that, that fixed asset, you have received a specific grant against that fixed asset. Okay. Because you have received specific grant against that fixed asset, that grant should ideally be income for me because I have received it. Now that income is not of that year. Income is spread over the years over which you are using the fixed asset. So as you charge depreciation on the fixed asset, similarly you should book income over the periods over which you charge depreciation and in the same proportion. So both should go simultaneously to your income and expenditure account. No, if, if, if the justification for charging depreciation is that the uh, the assets, whether acquired out of government grant or acquired out of other sources, once they are, once the assets are merged into the university, they, the assets contribute in generating the uh, re revenue of, uh, for the year, say fees from students because the capacity is increased and more students are coming, so fees is increasing. So, uh, f uh, on the basis of matching grant, uh, oh, sorry, uh, matching principle. Well, one second, one second. I have five areas in my financial statements, okay? Fine. Now, when I receive a grant for a specific fixed asset, Okay, when I buy the fixed asset, it goes to assets, that is fine. 
when I get a grant for fixed assets, it should be one of these five, it should go to one of these five areas, right? Which area will it go to? Liability first of all. Capital. Now, capital, okay. it, capital only includes something which is, as I said, proprietor's fund or promoter's Promot contribution, yes, okay. such kind of thing. Okay. Now, when you receive grant for fixed assets, which is a specific fixed asset, it is not a kind of promoter's contribution. That classification is incorrect. The only place it can go to is income. Now, it is not my that year's income. If it would have been my that year's income, as in case of revenue grant, I would have taken it to income directly. But that income is for next 5 years or 10 years. Because the income is for next 5 years or 10 years, that benefit of that income I will get for next 10 years, I should charge that income over 10 years. Hence, I should take it to deferred revenue grant, which is first my liability, and then I should transfer to income every year. That is the logic behind doing that. Capital will include only something which is in the nature of promoter's contribution. So, at, at the time of purchasing the or acquiring the asset, the practice that uh, uh, grant to the extent utilized for acquiring asset is transferred to capital, is, is that practice is not correct? I said in the first day itself, it's not to be taken to capital fund, it should be taken to deferred revenue. And then from deferred revenue, it should be taken to income. It is not your capital fund, it is not your capital. It's not a promoter's contribution. In the case of your government institution like in a city, the IDA, there will be no capital. Huh. Because the government never provides any capital. equity or anything like that. Uh, there would be cap nil capital in all the institutions. Right. Right. And everything will be rooted through that. Then everything will be a liability. Liability in asset. You might not have that third. third whatever thing at money all. we are receiving from government, that will be an income, whether in which form. So Either you revenue income see, then or, then your capital will include include reserves and surplus. Yes, yes, only reserves and surplus. Only reserves and surplus. Fine, but just because you don't have a promoter's contribution, you only have reserves and surplus. You don't make something which is your income as your capital. Because in case of government, the uh, concept of promoter is, does not exist at all. There is no promoter. In case of company, we have promoter, but in institutions, uh, a government has uh, constituted this. So, government is promoter, but we are not taking anything in capital. So, I think capital will be nil in all right, the institutions. Sir. Right, sir. This will go to deferred revenue grant only. Otherwise, your expenditure and income account will show a deficit of that depreciation amount, which is also incorrect. If you put that in your capital fund and you charge depreciation to PNL, then you don't have a credit in front of the depreciation and then the depreciation will be shown as loss, which is not correct. So both should go to your PNL or nil should go. Nil should go means uh, my fixed asset and this, my fixed asset will be represented at nominal value of rupees 1. So I should do that. That means depreciation should not go to PNL, or depreciation and re deferred revenue both should go to PNL. If you are taking uh, the value of assets rupee one, when we are receive, uh, it is purchased on the basis of government grant, then I think 90-95 percent cases assets will be rupee one. In that case, depreciation would be also almost nil. Almost nil, yes. But my net income and expenditure account will show a proper. No, that that Anyways. is also, but so far depreciation is concerned. I think depreciation would be… So that be is why both the options almost are… Almost nil in almost all the organizations because uh, I think the organization which are participating in this workshop, uh, mostly 100 percent funded by government of India. Right, sir. Hence, uh, AS12 allows you both the approach. One approach is you b show both fixed assets and deferred revenue at gross value. The other option is you show it at net value. Both approaches allowed and both approaches right. You can follow any of the approach you think is uh, reflecting your proper uh, financial conditions. Assets should also include the building. Yes. Buildings and all. Buildings and computers and furniture, everything. Why? Land. No, no. When 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 building is being constructed uh, by the um, uh, fund provided by government, so we are not incurring. Then uh, uh, cost would be uh, rupee one. If, if building is constructed Haan. by the fund given by the government, Haan. then
then what cost we will take for the building? No, sir, then, then you show on both the sides, right? Building, whatever, see, amount will be given specifically for building construction. Yeah. So, if my building construction has costed me some, say, 1 crore rupees, so my fixed asset will show 1 crore and my uh, deferred revenue fund will show 1 crore or building fund will show 1 crore, which should be kind of deferred revenue expenditure. And then you should transfer from that fund to income every time you charge depreciation on the building. And then the major furniture, instrument and all, all the Furniture will go to furniture or, uh, you know, if, if there is any fixed interiors, that will form part of building. If furnitures can be removed or furnitures can be dismantled or something like that, furnitures will be capitalized as furnitures. Now, if you have received grant against furnitures also, then again there should be a deferred revenue grant for furniture. What about the instruments? Same, same for any asset. The logic is same for any asset. Okay. What kind of intangible assets do you encounter in your uh, institutions? Patents, copyrights. Trademarks, fine. E-journal, is it a software or intangible asset? Is it an intangible asset? Okay, what is an intangible asset? Which, okay. which is not visible, cannot be touched. Okay, what is an asset? It is uh, procured for producing goods or providing services and is not held for sale in the ordinary course of business. That is asset. The benefit of that is available more than one year. Huh. Is that, uh, so, so there, is, there is future economic benefit. Yes. Okay, future means more than one year. You have control over it. That means you can decide when to use, how to use. And it is not held for sale in ordinary course of business. If these three conditions are fulfilled, basically not held for sale is for fixed asset or intangible asset only. Asset will be only for these two. There is a future economic benefit and there is a control. Okay. Now, tangible assets are something which can be seen. Intangible assets are something yes, which cannot be Our seen. question is still not solved. Uh, our, Haan, my, so I'm, my I'm, question I'm, is e-journal and database subscription, whether so it is software. That's why I explained what is the or definition intangible of, kind of thing. So, so, first you will have to tell me whether there is a future economic benefit arising out of an e-journal. Is there a future economic benefit? Future economic benefit means what? In terms of research, definitely it is a future economic benefit. Can you measure that future economic benefit? That, because it is intangible, uh, no. a specific value No, no. Be. Just because it is intangible, you cannot come up with a specific value that is not correct. The intangible assets can be of two types. One is internally generated, one is externally acquired. Okay. When it is internally generated, you should recognize anything as intangible asset only if a future economic benefit can be measured and it has a market in market outside. That means you can sell it in future. Okay, only then and then only you can recognize or you should recognize an intangible asset. So if I generate a software internally, suppose I make a software internally of my own institution. Okay. Now, that software can be capitalized if you know that what is the benefit I am going to acquire in future. So, I will be using that software for next 5 years. Okay. So, I know that there is a benefit of 5 years for next, next 5 years, I have that benefit. Now, when I make that software, I know how much cost goes into it. So, suppose that software, making of that software costed me 1.5 lakhs. So, I know I will make that software only if the benefit is at least 1.5 lakhs in the next 5 years. So, I can measure that future economic benefit. What about research? Research cannot be conclusive. It may be successful, may not be successful based upon that general. So, research is never capitalized. Research has to be expensed out. Immediately. So, so let, me, let me tell you, internally generated intangible asset, 
there is a research phase and there is a development phase. Research phase has to be expensed out immediately, no deferment, no nothing, same year in which you incur. Development phase, you have to capitalize. Now who decides when the research phase ends and when the development phase starts? How will you come to know when the research phase has ended and when the development phase has started? Simply when the product is... When you know that it is feasible. Economic so I, I know that I, I have done the research, I know that I have to make the product in this format or a macro level or a design is there and, you know, and I know that it can be done and then it will be useful for me. Either I can use it or I can sell it whichever way. That is the point when I start developing it and that is the point from where I can start capitalizing expenditure. Whatever expenditure has, uh, in, has been incurred before that should be expensed out immediately. Before this point, everything should be expensed immediately. After this point, everything should be capitalized. And this point has to be decided by you. That means you have to prove that, okay, now on I know that it, the software or the whatever I am making, the intangible asset, it is feasible. Either I am going to use it or I am going to sell it. But it, feasible means I can make it and I can use it or I can make it and I can sell it. That point onwards you can start capitalizing. If I invested for research purpose for making any software, uh, rupees, suppose rupees 10 lakhs, that cannot be treated as... Uh, Capital? As, no, it cannot be treated as asset. It because has to be. this is for the purpose of making software or... Sir, it might be purpose of making software, but research phase. Research means I am doing trial and error. Trial and error can give you positive results, can give you negative results. Because you are not sure of the positive results, you should expense out. But the moment you start developing it, you know that it will give positive results. Because you know it will give positive results, then and then only you start developing it. Hence, you should start capitalizing from that but point. But I have invested huge, num huge amount for this research purpose for making software. Sir, see there are two things again. The research word which is used in general terms, Okay, everything I do is termed as research. Okay, that's not the case. Research, some, so you, when, you, when you analyze it from accounting standard point of view, you will come to know that at some point of time that a research phase will actually start developing into a development phase or converting into a development phase. When do you call it a research? The research phase is when you are not sure whether the outcome will be positive or negative. If it is positive, if you know, ha, if you know, if, if later on it might become positive. Positive. I am doing accounting today. Today. Okay. Say suppose in the same year you come to know that it will be positive and you have not published your accounts as yet. Then you can capitalize those. Once you have published your accounts or once you, once you have made your accounts, you cannot go back and change the expense into capitalize. Right. So, the standard says that research phase has to be expensed out, development phase has to be capitalized. Sir, in scientific organizations, there is a hairline difference. Research are also of two types. One is basic research, where fundamental research is uh, uh, done and things are, you know, some uh, results are there. Right. Then applied research are there. So, in, the, in those cases where applied research are there, results are known. They are like a case of seed multiplication. I have done the trial and error, I know the result and result is known and then it is seed multiple. Then it is development in accounting terms. That's what I said. The research word which is used in normal terms or in scientific terms is different from what it is used in accounting terms. In scientific there is no development, it is always research. Like you said applied research and research. Yeah. There are various projects going on in organizations right. where basic research are also done and applied research are also right. done. So, so when you know that when you know that okay this will be the outcome and it will be positive so i have done my basic research and i am going to extrapolate it or i am going to apply it so that i come out with a product in that case it is development and one project can have the component of basic research and applied research yes why not because very difficult to apportion how much will go under revenue how much will go under capital because same equipments can be used for the 
uh, research uh, research expense and same can be for development or the applied applied portion also see in fact standard says that most of the projects will have both the things yeah that's what or I mean. almost all will have both the things first you always do research then you start developing it right you should be able to classify it or you should be able to differentiate that okay now research has ended i know that now this from here on i have to start developing on my research and i will come out with a product for sure that phase onwards you can start capitalizing i invested suppose 10 lakh for making any software and after one year or after two years i made one software how i will treat this software as it is a you you can capitalize all the cost in case of software pardon you can capitalize all those cost in that no, case no, i have already made earlier year expenditure already made in earlier year you started making software yes. you took 2 years to make a software yes why did you expense out in the first year you know that you are making a software the software plan was ready, ready. software is made by the technical people yes. you know you are developing that software it is not a research so it might development might take two years five years but you can start capitalizing as soon as you know that it is development so you can capitalize both two years cost and then you can you have to keep it in cwip capital work in progress capital work in. once it is completed after two years then you can transfer from capital wip to your fixed as intangible assets intangible. yes and once you transfer to intangible assets then you can start amortizing it let's go back to the standard again what is intangible assets let's take one by one okay software in a cd is it intangible or tangible cd is tangible software is intangible but when you have a software in a cd is it tangible or intangible intangible because i am not purchasing a cd i am purchasing a software because i am purchasing a software the entire product will be classified as intangible asset it is just transferred in a cd or just conveyed in a cd what I am buying is intangible. Yeah, we are not, I am not purchasing a blank CD. I am not intending to purchase a CD. I am intending to purchase a software because it is coming in a CD, it does not become tangible. It will be classified as intangible. Okay. Software of a printer or scanner. Okay. You know, every printer or scanner has a software or has a driver. You need a driver to run a printer or scanner or even if I use an optical mouse which is a Wi-Fi mouse, okay, which is wireless mouse, I have to use a driver which is a software. Now that software is a tangible or intangible? We have not purchased the software, we have purchased the printer, software is required to run that printer which is the part of printer which is integral part of printer i cannot use that printer or scanner without that software so that software cost will be added to the cost of printer and i will capitalize it as a printer so that is a tangible asset it's not an intangible asset okay legal documents patents or trademarks intangible so although it is papers documents but what it is in effect is a intangible asset, it is a patent, it is giving me a right, it is giving me trademark patents, all these are intangibles, yes. Sir, we have purchased computer and it is a Windows software, Windows software, computer is not usable, it is tangible or intangible? Windows software is intangible, why? Because you have options with software to use, you can use a DOS which is freely available, you can use Windows, you can use there are various softwares available in but market. Any one software is compulsory for one that software. No? You have to buy one software, but you can buy any software. Okay. Computer is workable. It is for your the need you are buying. It's like suppose I am an engineer. I will buy a CAD software, CAD software. Be, 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 without that software, I cannot use my computer. It's no of no use for me. As an engineer, it's of no use for me. Or as a CA, I have to buy a tally software. Otherwise, that computer itself is no use for me. I am buying computer so that I can use tele software. So that does not solve. You have options to purchase. A computer is, you need not need a Microsoft mandatorily to run a computer. You have DOS, you have other softwares which you can use. Then that software should be capitalized separately. The computer should be capitalized separately. Nowadays, when you buy a laptop, it comes with operating system, it comes with Windows. 
Now, if they are charging that Windows separately, that software separately, then you should capitalize that software as intangible and laptop as tangible. But if they are charging you a whole amount without giving you a uh, separation, then sir, you should… Sir, sir, in this actually we are buying uh, computers preloaded with uh, Windows, generally DGS and D-RAID contract and other things. The breakup of uh, the uh, operating system uh, may not be, mo in most of the cases it may not be available. For MS Office, like application software, it may be okay. For operating system, uh, since it is integrated with the computer, in the absence of which, though the options are available, I, I think it has to be capitalized and the breakup uh, in most of the cases is not available. So, that's what I said, if the breakup is not available, that's what I was coming to, that when you buy a laptop or computer nowadays, it comes along with Windows software. And then you don't have a breakup. If you don't have a breakup, you can capitalize entirely into your computers as fixed assets or tangible assets. Then you need not separate. But if you are buying a software separately, then you have to keep it separate as intangible asset. Okay. Now understand the difference also. Why do you do that? See, when, when I buy a Windows along with a computer, that means it comes installed in the computer, I cannot take it out and install somewhere else. But whereas if I am buying a CD separately, Suppose this computer is not working today, I installed in this computer Windows, it is not working today. I can use that C SIN, that, that number, there is a serial number and I can uh, install in some other computer. So it is transferable, if it is transferable, I have to capitalize it separately as intangible and computer as tangible. But when it comes along with it, then it's, it has to be capitalized together as computer. Suppose you have the license version for use of the 400 computer. Right. Huh. And at the same time, we purchase the license version for the 400 user in the campus. Huh. So this software on which we have spent, let's say, 50 lakhs of rupees, for example, huh. then this 50 lakh software license version, which can be used by any user in the campus, will be tangible or intangible? You try to answer. What will you do it do in that it case? It appears tangible. It will be intangible. Intangible because you are buying software separately. It is transferable. Today I put in this computer, tomorrow I put in that computer, I can put in any computer I want. Any 400 computers of my choice. So it is an intangible asset. It is a separate asset. Cost will not matter. Cost will not matter. If you go for education versions. No, whatever version, how does version differ? I am talking about principles. How does version differ, whether it is educational, professional, whatever version it is, if you have bought separately, it has to be capitalized as intangible. No, it's a, it's a free version. Uh, uh, we will get under free, free of cost. There is no... Money. If there is no cost, then suppose I capitalize it intangible asset. What will I measure at? Zero, right? So you are not buying anything, you are not acquiring anything, then what? Sir, what is the definition of intangible assets actually? Book definition of intangible asset, let me see if I have put in my presentation. It says identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance over which you have control and which gives future economic benefits. See, I will explain each and everything but let us first try and do this. Then I will go to the definition and explain what is identifiable, what is, right? Okay. Internet domain names, intangible asset, will you capitalize it? Can you capitalize it? See, yes, you can capitalize it. It is only just that it costs only 2000, 3000 rupees. So, you might even expense it out. And secondly, this purchase of domain name is yearly charges, this 2000, 3000 rupees. So, if it costs you for 5 years, see, as I said, it has to have a future economic benefit. So, I have paid for 5 years, 10 years, then you can capitalize it. If I am paying for every year, then it is a yearly charges and hence it does not have a future economic benefit and you have to expense it out. That is how it goes. It is a subscription, it is a yearly Ideally subscription kind of thing. So, because you pay yearly, you have to expense out. Customer relationships. Always it, it is the cost of reputation. Can you capitalize it? You cannot. It is internally generated goodwill. Internally generated goodwill can never be capitalized. It is an asset. But I do not have control over it. I cannot, I do not have control over it. Aaj wo mera customer hai, kal nahi hoga. I cannot say nahi, ho nahi padega, Do I have a, a five year agreement with him? 
if yes then yes it's a intangible asset if i don't have a five year agreement with him i don't have control over him like an employee human resource can i capitalize my human resource no suppose i installed sap sap or uh, tally 9 erp suppose if you understand that or i i hope you, you all will understand sap also and then i gave a training on sap okay training to all my employees that training itself cost 5 lakh rupees can i capitalize that 5 lakh rupees but if you have audit in the employee he will not be complete two year or three year then it is capitalized otherwise it is a expenditure it is a expenditure yes if it is if you have a put a, a bond or a agreement with the employee for 5 years it is not legal <laughs> to to bond an employee for 5 years or something like that so the logic is i have trained 100 employees for 5 lakh rupees or 50 employees for 5 lakh rupees but i have no control over them tomorrow they might leave next employee comes i have to train them again i have to incur another expense training expense so training expense can never be capitalized it is a human resource expense i don't have control over human resource i don't have control over customer relationship no control no asset no asset no intangible asset skilled employees okay have, we have just spoken about it internally generated goodwill you can never capitalize okay website cost website development cost is it intangible asset can we capitalize it <laughs> yes website development cost can be capitalized as intangible assets because website will go on for 3 4 years or whatever you assume as maybe it will require some uh, uh, development in future or some uh, updation maintenance updation those amcs updations can will have to expense out but the initial cost of creating that website can be capitalized okay let's go to the definition of intangible asset okay identifiable non monetary without physical substance over which you have control and which has future economic benefit identifiable it says identifiable means either it can be separated or it is because of some contractual or legal rights one of the two separated means i can sell it i can lease it i can uh, do anything with it i can separate it from my organization basically i can separate it from myself whether i want to sell it i want to lease it i want to give rights to someone to use it or whatever if that can be done it is identifiable or it is because of some legal or contractual right that i have acquired it again i can capitalize it as or i can say it is identifiable because i have that legal or contractual document with me non monetary what is non monetary <laughs> yes some monetary is something which is easily uh, you know any time converted into money terms or which is easily converted into money terms okay give me examples of monetary assets investments are monetary assets okay depend on the type of investment example fd one year fd fd yes Six fd is monetary below one year below one year fd below one year okay yes investment see fd even if above one year hmm. fd has a, a nature that you can uh, convert that fd or mature that fd any time you want and at any time of you want you can calculate suppose i want to mature it today i want to break it today i uh, tomorrow i will know what will be tomorrow's value because interest is fixed because of that nature so fixed or determinable amount is important if it can be converted into fixed or determinable amount it is called as monetary gold gold no gold is not monetary why is gold monetary gold every day the rates changed it is not monetary it is converted into it is converted okay okay i i have purchased 100 shares of tata motors is it monetary or non monetary it is non monetary it is investment sir shares is a investment shares is a investment of course so dematerialize wo wo you can sell it online so it is monetary it is non monetary the amount is not fixed amount cannot be determined it is non monetary but i can convert this I have a I have a furniture. I can sell it any time I want. So is it monetary? No. Non monetary. Stock stock is monetary? Yes. No. We can sell it, sir. Stock is to for sale. 
is it for store for more than one year no stock is inventory i can sell it any time i want you're right so it is monetary no it is not monetary i do not know the value for sure but i i know i know the certain amount of Huh. Money, but you don't know. But the I, I do not know. I do not know the exact amount, but I know the amount. Some amount I can earn. Can you guarantee? Can you give me in writing that I will be able to sell it for at least ten rupees? No, that cannot be. Then how is it fixed or determinable? If I have a hundred rupee note, I can give you in writing that I can sell it for hundred rupees. Bills receivable. Bills receivable, yes, monetary. Debtors. Debtors, yes, monetary. You know, in one of the uh one of the lectures i was saying debtors is monetary asset someone said debtors to insan hote <laughs> debtors is monetary asset <laughs> it is receivable accounts receivable debtors means accounts receivable it is monetary asset acha monetary asset, asset mein you know there is one more very important feature that feature is ki agar mera wo monetary asset hai to kisi na kisi ka wo monetary liability hoga अगर वो मेरा मॉनेटरी असेट है तो किसी ना किसी का वो मॉनेटरी लायबिलिटी होगा ही होगा इट इज अ फीचर आप ये कैलकुलेट करके देख लो आपको आंसर्स आ जाएंगे Impact impact remains same on balance sheet. Impact remains same on balance sheet, but I am trying to explain you what is monetary, what is non-monetary. It is also important from A S eleven point of view. If you have any outstanding monetary liability or asset in foreign exchange, then you have to convert using the closing rate as on thirty first March. Closing rate is the same hundred rupees. May not be monetary. Because you don't know you can purchase the same amount of dollar. Hundred rupees is the same. See, see, you are <laughs> logically you are right, but the problem here is see the problem started because every day the rupee value started changing and changing in huge variations. See, ideally because of nature, cash is cash. Whether cash is denominated in any currency, cash is cash. So a ten dollar might have a different value in rupee terms, but ten dollar will have same value in dollar terms. In terms of rupee, it is not a cash. Monitoring. but it may be in terms of dollar it is monitoring so that's what i'm saying you are you are logically right but theoretically or in in books or in accounting terms it will be monitoring this is the only i can say exception because of the changing values because the money has been made uh, rupee has been made directly proportion it has been linked to usd value because of that the value changes Debtor is monetary asset. It is monetary asset because I know that today I will be getting that hundred rupees or ten rupees from the debtor. Later on, it may no be. No guarantee, na. It can be bad. Sir, guarantee na. Today, actually, no such thing is there. In my locker, there are ten lakh rupees lying around. Tomorrow, if there is a fire, there will be no such thing as a guarantee. But debtor is monetary asset. It can be converted into fixed or determinable amount of payment, amount of cash. Okay. So let's. Uh, can can we go back, sir, to uh, skilled employees and? Uh, Sorry. Can we go back to skilled employees. You said you have no control. Ah, skilled employees. Yes. Where you said you have no control and uh, patent. Right. Skilled and employees is not a intangible asset which you can capitalize. Patent is a uh, intangible asset which you can capitalize. Uh, research invention. Ha. Huh. the the researcher must have used the uh, infrastructure of the institution right towards it so it is not his individual property right so a patent will be the property of the institution is that it so when he retires now what happens uh, will it it ha there has to be a okay i'll i'll answer your question see the patent is in the name of the institution has to be because he must have used the infrastructure of the institution right. so so what happens is when he starts using the infrastructure of the institution or institution starts incurring cost of the infrastructure yes. it has to first define whether it's a research phase or it's a development phase okay development phase how do you determine sir when it is registered for patent no see patent actually can be registered uh, you know even midway so i know that okay i can develop this 
I will register a initial, there is a initial uh, patent registration and there is a final patent registration. So yes, patent can be considered as a midway thing. A development phase can start before patent registration, it can start after or it can start from. So patent registration has nothing to do with uh, development phase. Development phase starts when I know that okay this is the structure or this is the roadmap. if I follow I will be able to reach a final destination and I will be able to confirmly develop a product which I can sell or use. That is the point onwards I can start capitalizing all the cost incurred. Now that cost includes whatever I pay to my employees, whatever I pay to the electricity for water or for any infrastructure or any facilities or any cost I have incurred from the development phase I can start capitalizing. So it, uh, the cost has to be looked back only from the development phase. Yes. Okay, uh, so I said identifiable non-monetary without physical substance, intangible assets has to be without physical substance. Control I defined, control means I can use as I want for whatever I want, that is a control. Okay. Future economic benefit, economic benefit can be revenue generation, can be cost saving, any benefit, any economic benefit in any manner is future economic benefit for a future period, future period means next period. Okay, you have to recognize intangible asset at cost. Okay, cost means purchase price and any directly attributable cost or implementation cost, which includes as I said, employee cost, employee benefits, professional fees, any testing charges, any rent, or any uh, depreciation of the instruments that you use, all those can be capitalized as development cost or part of that intangible asset. Okay, I was saying internally generated has to be distributed into two phase, research phase and development phase. Research phase, they have said that these are basically ideas, these are not rules, okay. These are examples which they have used. Research phase will include obtaining new knowledge, research findings, you search for alternative solutions and then you do a technical feasibility. Once that technical feasibility is established, you start with development phase. Development phase means you have intention to complete and use or sell. You have the ability to use or sell, which will give you future economic benefits and you can reliably measure the same. You have to amortize intangible assets over useful life. There is a rebuttable presumption that useful life cannot exceed 10 years. Okay. Rebuttable presumption means if you can prove this presumption wrong, then you can have a higher useful life. Otherwise, maximum useful life you can have is 10 years. You can use same similar to AS10, SLM or WDV method. Okay, for intangible asset you have to assume that residual value will be zero. Unless there is a commitment by a third party that they will purchase that intangible asset or there is an active market for that intangible asset. Any queries on intangible assets? Sir, uh, you said that you know uh, patent has to be uh, capitalized at cost. Yes. So the cost may be you know, the research cost plus you know when we file a patent it has to go it has patent to go registration. To, uh, patent registration has to go to various stages. Right. And some of them, you know, whether it reached the final destination or not, that's a different story. Right. But if a patent, if you get a patent, the value that it gives to the organization is not just the research cost and the you know, patent filing cost. You know, you can generate a whole lot of revenue because of the royalty that it commands and so on. So, I, I really don't think that you know, it should be, if you just uh, capitalize at cost, it's not a fair value. Patent registration cost also you can capitalize. Whatever you pay to the person who is developing that product or that research, development of that research phase, that also you can capitalize. So, all your cost after development, whatever you pay, whatever you incur, can be capitalized as part of that patent or that intangible asset. So, okay. uh, now why do we do at cost? Can we do a uh, revaluation of intangible asset like we do for fixed asset? We can do revaluation for fixed asset, right? 
can we do revaluation for intangible asset you don't have a active market you cannot sell it how will you do it you don't have a market value for that now even though the or wait and see the world market you are choosing my market or some secret afterwards if we uh, if i want to pay and want to uh, make a new contract at that time we, i can change the money you are talking about in my books or your books my books your books yes you are giving the you are giving right to use the patent to someone else you are leasing out the patents uh -huh. but it may have a different value at different time patents as a intangible asset is to be capitalized only at cost and has to be kept at cost minus amortization value and that amortization is all right value. but after few years suppose after 5 years it may have a very high value or otherwise it may have a may, may be very lesser value than that so you still have to carry it at cost minus amortized value that may not give the give uh, correct picture in fact because suppose it is having very less value and we capitalized it after before 5 years okay what do you do with the value you sell it you you give a right to use to someone no, no. yeah of course uh, and you give... earn it right what do you get you when you get that money when you earn it where do you take it income right and what do you take to expense amortization of this intangible asset so you are using that intangible asset to earn that money right so you are getting that income you are taking amortization of that intangible asset to your expenditure account that's how you do accounting will there be any depreciation on it yes amortization the word is amortization it's same as depreciation intangible assets will have to be depreciated over 10 years and when you depreciate it you use it for there's a future economic benefit so you generate income out of it that income will be taken to income account in the educational sector the scientists uh, do various types of research right now he has done say three different types of research and finally he says that okay i have a patent for it ha huh. and he applies for a patent right where do we identify the cost is his research complete when he applies for patent say for example it is complete but he has done say three four phases of research and finally he says okay i have got a patent now and i want to apply for a patent ha huh. and then he, and he starts applies the registration cost is okay but uh, and then he starts developing that research you start See, developing he has developed product? to a stage where he is applying for a patent ha huh. he says this is my patent now now this is a result of over the years a complete series of researches right. so how do you identify the cost it is only him that who can say that okay from now on i know that see out of 3 4 alternatives or 3 4 researches i know that i can this this research is something which i can develop on and he starts doing a advanced research or advanced uh, thing on that research that's the point when he should say that okay now you can start capitalizing these cost see it 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 is a subjective thing you have to only prove it or why by, by by way of papers that yes this research can convert into something material from here on so till that point everything will be expense from this point onwards everything will be capitalized and somewhere down the line you will apply for patent even after applying for patent maybe 6 months or 1 year you will need further development of that product the second aspect of my question is uh, if if the patent is registered in the name of the institution right but it is the patent of a particular scientist ha huh. once he retires how does it have an impact on our balance sheet once he retires okay do we still have that right of that patent and can we still get any benefits out of it in future that is dependent on the ipr rights so if you have that ipr rights if you have that right to use it in future and to generate future economic benefit in future then you can still hold that as intangible asset otherwise you have to uh, amortize it or finish it off or you call it as impairment because the now the right has gone any other question on intangible assets i think yes it will be an impairment of asset so once the researcher leaves the service retires uh, that invention cannot be uh, operated by any other so it will be an impairment then of you asset. will have to impair yes so basically see there are two things one you can if you can estimate how many years you can use the research or how many years before which he will not retire and that is not exceeding 10 years then you can easily amortize over 10 years okay if he retires in the 6th year then yes then remaining 4 years you have to treat it as uh, impairment and charge it to your expen expenditure account or if he retire if you have spreading over 10 years and he retires after 10 years then anyways your intangible asset has become zero 
then there is no need of impairment okay let's have a tea break <laughs>